the criticism is it is shirk to go to grave and pray there and have like uh, uh, prayers there and make have tawassul there then you were very uh, uh, clear when you said that it's not shirk it's haram leads to shirk so now the criticism is it's shirk why you said it's not shirk it's haram leads to shirk this this criticism of uh, uh, my view we have to be again clear here it's not my view it is the view of the vast majority of the ummah what i am saying is the default view of the vast majority of the ummah which is that sometimes sajda is an act of worship when you do it to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when you do it to what Allah has commanded you to do. Allah has commanded us to do sajda to Him in the direction of the Kaaba. It becomes an act of worship. Sometimes the same act can become haram and bid'ah but not shirk. The same goes for calling out to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the default position of the majority of the ummah. So uh, when a person says, oh, Yasir Qadi is saying that it is no longer shirk, gently I say, actually this is the position of every single shaykh and alim outside of that one movement that says it is shirk. Many of the ulama, in fact, this is the default of the position of the Deoband, the default of Nadwatul ulama. Uh, this is the default of many Azhari mashayikh as well. They just say the same thing. W uh, summary of it is, when does asking someone something become the type of dua that is shirki? We all know we can ask someone something. We all know I can ask you something, no. right? According to many scholars of Islam, you can ask even the Prophet in the grave, this is Ibn Qudama and mainstream ulama. I disagree with this by the way, but you want to open this door, let's be clear. They said you can ask the Prophet to ask Allah Azza wa Jal in the grave. You go to him and they base this on the verse in the Quran, right? I don't want to get into all of these arguments, but if you want to open this door, uh, don't say Yasir Qadi says, say the majority of the Ummah says, Say an nawawi says, Include say Ibn Qudama says. And if you ask me, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah also says, that merely asking other than Allah does not become dua until conditions are met. What are those conditions? You believe the entity you're asking is able to give you independently. When you think a Nabi or a Wali or an angel is able to grant you forgiveness or rizq or life or death, you have made an ilah other than Allah. This is a Rabb that you are worshiping. This it is, is the essence of shirk. It is shirk. It, is shirk, it is shirk. But yeah. when you think that if I go to the Prophet's grave, I say, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah to forgive me, right? So now you're asking him to ask Allah. I think this is wrong after his, uh, and he's in the Qabr now. I think this is shirk. wrong. It is not shirk. You're not making him a God besides he's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. who said this Based before on you. The concept of, it goes back to definitions. It goes back to what is dua. A dua is ibadah, no doubt. But the one who does this will say, I'm not making dua. Why are you calling this dua? So when does asking become dua? They said the dua just to ask. Okay. Who, who controls the keys of Jannah? Who allows people into Jannah? Allah subhanahu Allah. wa ta'ala. Does anybody share this privilege with Allah? No, no. no. Okay. Hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Rafi' the mawla of the Prophet When the Prophet said, what do you want? What did he say? أسألك مرافقتك في الجنة أسألك أنت أسألك نعم. مرافقتك في الجنة Did Rafi' think that the keys to Jannah belong to the he Prophet should, He should say أس, أسأل الله مرافقتك في الجنة So did Rafi' think that the Prophet no, Of course he was Sahabi شيء. So what is going on here? The feeling itself, the believing itself So Rafi' wants the Prophet to ask Allah this is halal in his lifetime. It is halal in his lifetime. Everybody says that even the Salafis say it is halal in his lifetime. In his lifetime. The Salafis say once he has moved on to the Alam al-Barzakh, it becomes shirk. Others say it's haram. And others say it is halal. It's historically, it is what it is. So when my critics point this out, we simply gently say, Ya Akhi, it's not Yasir Qadi versus the ulama of the ummah. On the contrary, it is one small strand of the followers Ibn Abdul Wahab versus the rest of the ummah. But if you believe that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to ask Allah on your behalf and he can hear you in the Qabr, I say this is wrong and it's opening up the door and you're a slippery slope and we should not do this. But to say it is shirk has repercussions and it has dangerous repercussions. I go into these repercussions. When Ibn Abdul Wahhab, and I respect him as a person, when he went down this road, he had to make takfir of the rest of the entire ummah. 
and that's what he did. And he said, the Ottoman Empire is worse than the Quraysh of Mecca. And everybody who agrees to the Khilafah of the Ottoman Empire becomes a kafir, murtad, halal ad dam And he began killing people, and he considered the Imams of the Haram to be kuffar, murtad, dun, and, and, and. So it's a very dangerous position. When you say the person is committing shirk, and you make takfir of the bulk of the ummah, you are opening up a can of worms. And this is what caused me to rethink through definitions.